as soon as this is Walter Michael starts. Okay. As soon as he looks like he's ready. Yep. Um, and then, of course, everybody kneels. So they're just in your mind. Correct. Yeah, no, I have another copy of the intercessions so that I'll at least know what Bishop will go off of. Yeah, because Mike has to read this whole list of names. So yep, don't... I've got the names. Yeah, <laughs> so as long as Bishop doesn't freak out. He's familiar. Okay. <laughs> that, um, and of course, that's after the so. But that's all mostly gone.
I'm, I'm familiar with them.
Good morning. As we begin our celebration of Mass, please turn to page three in the Missalette. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And please raise your palm branches to be blessed.
word be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and the Son. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Brothers and sisters, like the crowds who are playing Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth. Please sing All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 40 in the Missalette.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany, reclining at table, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar and perfumed oil, costly, genuine, spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to him. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they were sacrificed, the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his, two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, 
and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. Then began to be distressed and to say to them one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. They all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep. For they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came, immediately went over to him, and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, 
Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth around his body. They seized him, but he left the cloak cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priests, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at a fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to, to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, Out of the story of this temple, made with hands, and within three days, no another, not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him by deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blinded, folded him, and struck him, and said to him, Prophesy! And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along, seeing Peter warming himself. She looked intently and said to, and said to him, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they arrested, a man called Barabbas, that was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, 
Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and that led him out to crucify him. They pressed him, they pressed into service a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming into from the into from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the palace place of Gagatha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him, among, mocked him among themselves and said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. But the Christ, the King of Israel, come down on the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi. Lema Sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry, and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Jose. Joseph and Salem, whose women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, 
since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath. Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in the tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jose, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, Palm Sunday, we begin Holy Week with our minds and hearts lifted up to the Lord, focusing on the great event of our salvation, the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. I encourage you to take advantage of all the graces of this week, to live these days with special reverence and devotion through prayer and participation in the beautiful liturgies of Holy Week. Today, we remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus entered Jerusalem to undergo his passion, and he was very purposeful about this. He started the procession to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, the place where King David had mounted a donkey when he was fleeing Jerusalem in exile. When David left Jerusalem and went to the Mount of Olives, there were cries of lamentation, sorrow. Now on Palm Sunday, we have the king's return, the new king, the son of David, the Lord Jesus, who also mounts a donkey on the Mount of Olives, not to flee Jerusalem, but to enter Jerusalem. There are no songs of lamentation. Rather, there are shouts of jubilation. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entering Jerusalem, mounted on a donkey, was a bold announcement that he was the Messiah, the new king Jerusalem had been waiting for. He was the king who entered the city not on a horse or chariot, and not carrying any weapons. He entered meek and humble and riding on a donkey. This was his kingship. He is the new king who will bring peace, not war. This went against the popular view that the Messiah king would be a warrior who would overthrow the Romans and establish a powerful restoration of David's kingdom. Jesus did, in fact, establish a kingdom, but a kingdom not of this world. He inaugurated the kingdom of God, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. In the Passion account from St. Mark's Gospel today, we heard that Five days after entering Jerusalem in triumph, Jesus was put on trial before Pontius Pilate. And Pilate asked Jesus about his kingship. 
Are you the king of the Jews? The Roman procurator asked him. Jesus answered affirmatively. Pontius Pilate did not understand the kingship of Jesus. Later, in the praetorium, the soldiers dressed Jesus in a mock royal robe, a scarlet cloak worn by Roman military and high officials like the emperor. They put a crown of thorns on his head and a reed as a royal scepter in his hand. They knelt down as if paying homage to a king and they mocked Jesus saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and they beat him. A fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy of the suffering servant in today's first reading. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. At this Mass and at every Mass, we worship Christ our King. We say the same, sing the same words sung by the people on that first Palm Sunday, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And our Lord comes. Our King, who entered Jerusalem humbly and with meekness, comes to us under the humble forms of bread and wine. This is the banquet of our King. It is the sacrifice of our King. During this Holy Week, may we give honor and praise to our King who reigns from the throne of the cross. His royal throne is the wood of the cross. Jesus is our shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. He is the Son of God who loves us to the end. We are his disciples and we seek to love him in return. We strive to follow him along the way of the cross, the path of love. We strive to serve him in our brothers and sisters, especially in the poor and the needy, the sick and the suffering. The Lord says to us, love one another as I have loved you. This week, I pray we experience anew this love that reached its climax on Mount Calvary. I hope and pray that the days of Holy Week, especially the sacred Paschal Triduum, will be a time of grace for all of us, a time in which we enter more deeply into the passion of our Lord and King. Then, next Sunday, we will experience in a deeper way the joy of his victory the triumph of his love in the celebration of his resurrection. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers of petition to God, our merciful Father. That the successors of the apostles, obedient to the call of Jesus, receive grace to carry his cross humbly in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That national and local leaders stand up for the rights of prisoners, especially those unjustly accused. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For sincere willingness to turn from condemnation and grow in charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those among us facing a crisis of faith may find renewed hope in the scriptures, rites, and prayers of Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have no one to pray for them, and for those we have promised our prayers, especially for Deacon Jim and Karen Fitzpatrick, for Robert Ihart, Marlene Vogel, Grace Smith, Carmela Flynn, Patricia Farewell, Mark Freilish, Edward Federer, Barbara Miralis, Ted and Jerry Krause, Roman Rico Cruz, Janetta McPherson, Ralph Werrell, Jody Mitchell, Sharon Etzel, Betty Wirt, Susan Clemens, Craig Von Den Bosch, Brianna Bauman, Jeff Wardell, Donna, Donna Horvath, Arlen Bonis, Rachel Shaw Stow, Tom Foster, Claudine Miller, Katie Urda, Janie Off Aaron, Evan McTurty, Melanie Como, Karen Hicks, and Pat Patricia Zurat. We pray to the Lord. And that those near death embrace the cross of Jesus and rise again to see God's face in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, especially those who have died from COVID-19 and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions of the Mitchell family for whom this Mass is being offered, and the needs we now place before God in silence. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your Son's passion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Please. second collection will be for the Women's Care Center. Please join in singing number 40, O Sacred Head Surrounded, in the Missalette, number 40.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. I was happy to begin Holy Week with you here at St. Matt's Cathedral. And I let's pray for each other during this week. Uh, and also I look forward to celebrating the beginning of the Paschal Triduum with you on Holy Thursday, uh, the Mass of the Lord's Supper at, I think, 7 o'clock p.m., Father Terry? 7? Yeah. And all the seminarians of our diocese will be here for that mass and for the procession. So, um, including the two deacons. Did you know that there's seven deacons that I'll be ordaining priests in June, which is such a blessing for our diocese. <laughs> this is Deacon Michael Ammer, and this is Deacon Keaton Lockwood, both from Fort Wayne. And although we are getting vocations from South Bend now, too, so I'm glad about that. Um, there was something else I wanted to say, and I drew a blank. I'm getting old. I don't know. But anyhow, yeah, I think these, oh, I know what it is. This is many, many decades. I don't know. Do you guys know when the last time we had seven men to be ordained priests? How long? Does that go back to the... 60s or the 50s, maybe? Yeah, from before the diocese was separate, before Gary was created. Well, that means that was in 57, right? So, wow, that's a lot of years. So, And it's not just the numbers, because numbers of priests are good, but we need good priests and holy priests, quality. So we're blessed with quantity, but we're also blessed with quality. So we give thanks to God for that. Anyhow, have a very blessed Holy Week, everyone, and I hope to see many of you here on Holy Thursday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God, St. Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please sing the closing hymn, number 50, Were You There in the Missalette? Number 50.
Thank you. 